Howdy folks, this is the third Port Charles vlog, oh my god. <laughs> oh man, uh, it's, it's getting better already. I'm, I'm getting more drawn into it. Um, the writing is getting better. Uh, pacing is getting better. It's like a lot of shit happened this week. And bear in mind, this, this, this show is a 30 minute show. So for a lot to happen within an hour and a half of a week of, of show is, is pretty good, I think. Um, so where we last left off, uh, Danielle had just made it back, you know, went back to Jake and, and he, they greeted each other by way of sex. Cause like you do, you know, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. And, and I do have my notes this week <laughs> again. I didn't have them last time, but, um, but I'm and but like the show, I'm working on getting myself a little better too. Hey, why not? <laughs> um, but uh, the reason why uh, Danielle poofed on Jake was she claimed that you know she got a commercial. Jake doesn't believe her, and and you know she she's she said, oh well, you know maybe you know really I just needed some time alone to see where I you know basically the whole alone time shtick, which eh, it's all right. Jake is like, oh I don't know why you needed that. Uh, I I think by the by you know just throughout the whole week it just seems to me like Jake has some. Abandonment issues and codependency problems. Uh, maybe it's because he grew up as kind of a loner, uh, was more interested in in his science sets than he was in people, and so now that he's actually in love with somebody, he doesn't want to lose them. You know that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's a little weird, a little creepy, but uh, you know, given his backstory, you kind of understandable. Um, oh God. Uh, uh, and, and, and I still don't know if it says more about him or more about the times either. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna, I'm, you know, more on the side that it's him, but not 100% sure. Uh, but, um, but yeah, they, they visit at the hospital every now and then and, and they get all mushy and kissy and, and Eve just kind of, you know, snarks at, at, at Jake and Danielle for making out in the middle of the, of the uh, on-call room and, and Jake just like, you better apologize to her. And I'm like, dude, uh, you're protective. That's fine. That's great. But you're overdoing it. I get protective. I don't overdo it. It's like, it's like Jeebus. Oh, God. Of course, she's also an actress. So she has thicker skin than he does. I mean, as an actor, you need to have that thicker skin. Hi. Um, ah, so, uh, oh, Lordy. Uh, what else do I have here? Um. Frank and Julie, they're they're developing a little bit. In fact, Julie is moving into Frank's place. Into the basement that he's renovated into an apartment. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, they draw up, draw up the lease and put it on a paper towel and then just stick it up there. And Frank's like, yeah, it'll be fine, you know. And then so he helps her get moved in. They get to know each other. It's like, you, you see this, is you see like a relationship developing, which kind of makes, looks like it makes Chris a little jealous but Eve figures out that Chris actually potentially has Julie's file, which we know he does. And the reason why he's interested in her is because of whatever's in the file. I don't know what angle Chris is working yet, but we'll, fi we'll find out eventually. <laughs> we kind of have to. I mean, th this show's already done. They and this was not the time where they ran plot lines for a whole year. Mm. Oh. Uh, let's see. Uh, speaking of Eve, you know, you know, Scott convinces her to help, you know, with, with, especially with Serena and everything. And, and, and oh God, what was it? Um, ah, da, 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 da. oh, right. And, and, and Eve, of course, she's sneaking away and, and she's skirting the law, helping Scott because, you know, he walked out of the damn hospital after, just after, you know, having his spleen removed. So, you know, he really shouldn't do that. But, and you know, and I think I mentioned last time, you know, he made it to Lucy and Doc's place. You know, they made it to the lighthouse, and 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 he's recovering. Eve walks in, checks up on him, and she's like, you know what, you need to sign this fucking thing too. You know, the the release AD, AMA release form or something like that. And and she she makes this threat to him. The people you're staying with, they can't find out about this, because if they do, someday. When you least expect it, I will get you back to the hospital and I will perform a bilateral archaeectomy without anesthesia. What's that? You don't want to find out. And you know, it sounds like she would, 
from the sounds of it, I tried to Google it, but I don't have the spelling for it. But based on what I found, it's like she's either wanting to rip out, she's either going to rip out his spine or the arches of his feet. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm really not sure. There's a lot of, there's a lot of really good moments, um, both humorous and otherwise. Um, all the moments were like Scott, you know, you know, especially the moment towards the end of the week where Scott listens to uh, the recording of Serena that the kidnappers had used to get in touch with him. That, that was, that was kind of, you know, I, I don't want to say sweet, but it's still a good moment, good character moment for Scott. Um, and, and at one point Eve, I like on her first day at the hospital, Eve he sneaks over to see Scott and it gets busted by Lucy of all people who thinks Scott is not, you know, you know, Scott's trying to protect her and, and you know, cause he doesn't want her to lose her job. And, and at the same time, she's also asked, um, He's also helping out with Joe, either getting a lawyer for him or what have you. And um, because that medical review board is still coming up. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, you know, and, and Karen had orig originally asked for help uh, from Lee, but Lee couldn't do it. He has to represent the hospital, so conflict of interest. Ugh, can't do that. Uh, so Karen goes to Scott. Eve goes to Scott, too. <laughs> this guy's like, all right, all right, all right, you know. So Scott's gonna help out somehow. I don't know how he's gonna do it, but we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, uh, Julie calls everybody the recovery room at one point, and just some little plot developments there. Um, we get to know uh, Frank and Joe's mom, uh, Mary, a little while, and apparently she was dating Mike Corbin for a while. Uh, those who don't know, Mike Corbin is the father of Sonny Corinthos. Uh, yes, originally from General Hospital. Just to just to kind of hammer it in a little more that these two shows uh, are are very well connected. <laughs> oh, that that's that's a very well thing. And and we get we get the first on screen appearance, at least in this series, of Sigmund the Duck. <laughs> He's a duck. They have a pet duck. I love it. <laughs> and and he made his appearance after Doc had proposed to Lucy. And Lucy at first is like, no, no, I, you know, I have all this, 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 this. And then Doc just gives her big damn shut up kiss. <laughs> uh, because Lucy's a motor mouth. And, and even leading up to the proposal, Kevin took on a little bit of it. And Lampshade would be like, man, I sound like you. <laughs> that was great. Um, uh, and Scott, he, he has himself a little cute moment. I can't remember if it was with Lucy or it was, if it was with Eve. But he tells a story about how Serena had stood up for her friend. Um, I, I don't remember the guy's, uh, the, the kid's first name, but all the other kids called him Stinky, except when she was around. Um, and somebody tried that around her, and she basically beat the shit out of him, put him in a headlock, all that stuff. Even Scott couldn't get her out of it. It's like, wow. Oh. Uh, I, I think it was Karen. I think it was Karen he was talking to about it, actually, because... Is, you know there was there was moments where they talked and he he was very much reminded of Serena when it comes to Karen so this is like yeah and oh wow let's see what what else is in my notes what else is in my notes um okay so Mary uh, uh this you know Mary Scanlon uh, Joe and Frank's mama she learns what happened you know during the 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 the, the night that Cooper had them all captured and the medical review board and everything. And she promptly calls Alan Quartermain to resign. <laughs> you know, if I make too many Alan Quartermain references, I fear that Diamanda Hagen is going to have to pop in on me sometime. Uh, oh, boy. And, and yes, get your Alan Quartermain and Lost City of Gold jokes out of the way now. Go ahead. You know, put them in the comments. They'll be graded at the end of the video. Um, speaking of Quartermains, there is apparently a residency up for grabs, uh, which was first established in the in this week. Um... Chris claims it's a tradition for all the interns to, you know, put a little money in the pool every week they survive or what have you. And whoever gets the whoever gets the residency at the end buys drinks or whatever for everybody who didn't make it. Um, so, you know, yeah. And we also get to see a little bit more into Karen. You know, obviously she's having marital problems with Jagger. Uh, she's staying with her mom temporarily, which I thought her mom was dead. Apparently not. Uh, at least not at the beginning of this series. Um, so I, I, I may have mentioned that a video or two ago. I was wrong. <laughs> but, yeah, that happens. Um, uh, another little cute moment. 
Uh, when when uh, Lucy and Doc are on the way to see his dad, they they just went and you know got the little sonogram and heard the heartbeats and everything. She compared the baby's heartbeat to Pac Man. <laughs> it was so great. It's like wah, 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 wah. Oh. <laughs> Any, anybody who's actually listened to a fetal heartbeat, can you can has that is is has that happened to you guys? Is is that something that's happened to you? Because that's kind of cute. Uh, but yeah, we are introduced to uh, Doc's father. Uh, Victor, and he's he's, he's he basically I, I I first wanted to call him catatonic, but it's not quite that way. He, he's just very detached. You know, his mind is still there, but his personality is gone, as Doc said. Uh, but that doesn't stop Lucy from motor mouthing him. <laughs> he just just going on and on and on and on and on. And right as they're about to leave, she says, "Yeah, we're gonna you're gonna be a grandfather." <laughs> and you know, she goes on about that a little bit longer. Doc finally gets her to leave, and as they're walking out, he's like he, he's like, "Congratulations, Monk." Uh, which uh, I, th I, th I think they do mention it later on, but Monk being short for Monkey, which I think was a nickname that Kevin had growing up. So uh, so it was like, oh, got a little little progress with him. So uh, I, I can honestly say, I, I will spoil it, he does get better and becomes a, more of a major character later on. Um, so this is not the last we see of him. <laughs> um, uh, Chris and Joe, they trade barbs about the whole you know Audrey incident you know like the day the, their first day you know Julie tells off both of them and Chris and Eve I, I don't are they flirting or are they just you know really getting that chummy that quickly um and Eve says well you yeah, know you can't antagonize Joe and expect to get any booty from Julie <laughs> oh and when Jake finally shows up with Danielle at the on call room at that first point this is this I, I, it's a little bit out of order how I'm telling it but this was before Eve had insulted Danielle, or, or I guess supposedly did. I, I didn't see much of it, but eh, whatever. Um, they first show up, and, th and they both first see her. Uh, we get this! Well, well, look who finally got out of bed. Dr. Creepy to X-ray. I guess she's Dr. real after all. Some love goddess. I'd worship at her altar. Oh, please, we're talking Trey Ordinaire. What's the matter? You're jealous that she's got bigger eyes than you? And... I have to wonder, is Eve bi? Because that would be kind of awesome, especially since this was re this was filmed and aired in 97. Um, I think that would be kind of awesome. Um, and, of course, Chris's line. Good luck today. I'm really excited for all of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting excited, too. Oh, Chris. Ugh. Oh, let's see. Da, 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 da. You have the group photo, which everybody is in, including Joe, who is technically suspended. And not long after that, Matt... Uh, he, he has to deal with his first patient, and and Joe, of course, he can only stand there and watch, you know, because he's he legally can't do anything. Um, when uh, Matt's first patient just he gets all crazy because I don't want a cripple touching me, <laughs> and and Joe, for his credit, when once um, everybody else realizes, oh shit, something's going down in there, um, Joe's like, no, no, wait, 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 let him handle it. He's handling it. He seems to be all right, and Matt does, you know, he. He talks him up. He t he talks the patient down, and he's like, "Yeah, you know what? Hey, hey, you know all this," and he manages to help him. So good on Matt. <laughs> and there was there was also a little bit more uh, backstory developed for Matt as well. Uh, that how he how he got to be a paraplegic. I think it's paraplegic. Uh, no, quadriplegic. No. Yeah, either way, he's paralyzed from the waist down. And um, ah, uh, yeah. Somebody in the comments will correct me with a proper word, I'm sure. Um, but um. But he, it was like he was 18, he was in an accident, and he was told when he woke up that, you know, he, nothing was going to change, except uh, obviously it is, because he has to walk, roll around in a wheelchair, and because of that, he decided, you know what, I'm going to be a doctor, <laughs> kind of like prove everybody, you know, yeah, I'm, I may I may be in a wheelchair, but I can still do it, you know, it, it's it's fine. And he has, and there's this like little exchange between Ellen and Matt. So, Dr. Burgess, what next? You got lucky. Actually, I don't swing that way. <laughs> One minority status is enough for me. I see you're in denial. And, and it eventually goes into, like, you know, you know, one-upping each other. Trent, it seemed like one-upping each other on, you know, which, which of them has it worse in terms of minorities. Uh, but but that, whole, that whole joke about the, about the, I'm already part of one minority, and, you know, don't want to be a part of another. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, it's like, wow. Yeah, mid-late 90s soap opera humor, ladies and gentlemen. 
Oh, oh God. Um. Uh, Mac. Mac interviews Karen a little bit about the about the accident, and they get to the conclusion that the same car that hit Scott was the same one that run off with Serena. Um. So they're in Port Charles, which when uh, you know later on the kidnappers call the lighthouse where they know apparently they know where Scott is. Um. And and le and have them have him listen to a recording of Serena asking, "Well, why haven't you come pick me up?" Um, you know, you know that that's how they can do that, and that's how they've narrowed it down that the kidnappers are in Port Charles, and 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 we also learn at the end of the day, uh, you know, Danielle has this mysterious overnight job um, that Jake is not too comfortable with, but that's also because he is very codependent. Um, Turns out that Danielle was working for this very sinister guy, and she's asking if she is all right. Makes me wonder. I I, I think I think I know where this is leading because I remember the guy. Um, he, he he actually is like one of the first major villains of the show, uh, but I'm not going to spoil it here. <laughs> um, I I will spoil my spoil minor things. But this is not a minor thing. Um, but I will say that this guy is also played by the real-life husband of Lynn Herring, who plays Lucy Co. So that's pretty cool. Um, but they have some sinister thing happening, and and well, I, I think I, I think I do remember exactly what it leads to. Again, not spoiling it, but uh, we'll see if I'm right. Um, oh dear, 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 dear. And 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 it's also helped with Doc figuring out. Okay, you know what? They contacted you, right? So that means they want something from you, and they will contact you again. Which turns out Doc's right, because when the cops searched the payphone where the call came from, they found a note that was apparently let, meant for Scott. So, hey, why not? <laughs> um, get to know a little bit more about Frank over this week. Uh, you know, he was going to be a doctor at one point, but, and he even went to Notre Dame for a little bit. Um, but he ended up, you know, having to drop out after his dad died he came back to port charles to you know help with all that and just never really went back and became a paramedic so you know hey and then hey joe came along and, and he did that for him um <laughs> speaking of which oh god joe and frank um you know they, they get into this shouting match over the fact that joe is observing um, and Frank thinks he shouldn't do it, and, and Joe is like, you know, rrr, rrr. they get into the shouting match, and you get to see these moments. Frank, just leave me alone. Joe, listen to me. No, I don't I know want what to listen to you, yes, Frank. No, you do not me. know what you're talking yes, about. Yes, I do no, know what you're talking don't. about. Joe. My father is dead, and I don't need you to run my life for me. Somebody needs to keep you in line. No, no, you're not the Joe. one that's going to do it. Leave me Man, alone, Frank. Frank. No, I will not leave, leave me you alone. alone. And it's just... <laughs> you don't even get to hear much of the argument, and it's kind of... It, it's played kind of dramatically for laughs, I guess. <laughs> Especially that last moment when Karen leaves. It's like, it, it's, it's like I think one of them just does like, like, you know, don't don't tell me to leave me alone, you know, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, or something like that. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? <laughs> and of course, and then you have Ellen. Frank, just leave me alone. I'm not going to leave you alone, Joe. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. Stay out of Listen my life. I am saying I am no, not going to stay. Stop it. Let what are you doing? Um, we were just, we're uh, low on supplies in the truck. I was truck just helping him out. You know we're gonna another heating pad. Uh, right? Yeah, there you go. How about okay. anything else, Frank? No, no, that ought to do it. Okay, Perfect. catch you later, bro. All right, you take care. Uh huh. Oh God. <laughs> oh wow. And and even Ellen's attitude is lampshaded by one of the nurses who is like, it was like, yeah, you need to, you, you know, you need to show people that you have like emotions and shit. And she's like, no, I don't, because I don't have any. Or, or something like that. That's what I got out of it. Um, but yeah, Eve, I, I think I've mentioned earlier, Eve figures out that Chris has the missing intern file. It happens to be Julie's and she's figuring out that Chris has this, this more than just a passing interest in Julie. And by more than passing interest, I mean, he wants more than just to bone her. Um, you know, whatever. And in a mix up, um, Frank, Frank rents out the basement to Julie. While Joe rents out the basement to Eve, the brothers not having communicated that Frank already rented it out to Julie, and to the point to where Joe even got like an official lease with notarization and everything for Eve. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, cue the odd couple theme, because <laughs> those two hate each other. Oh, and it didn't help 
that Julie, she, for her credit, she tried to cover for, cover for Eve while she was off taking care of Scott and out of the hospital and Ellen was just really upset and really pissed. And then Eve comes back not knowing this and just basically shoots herself in the foot. Oopsie! <laughs> and so, of course, Eve is in deep shit and is not a fan of Julie. And, and it's like, poor Julie, she's just, she's just trying to help. Oh, uh, no. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah and, 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 of course, when they realize, oh, shit, we, 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 got, we got basically put into the same apartment. Uh, Frank first tries to compromise. Like, you know what? You, know, you can just, like, split things. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll work on it. And then, then they're like, oh, hell no. And he's like, okay, wait for the gong. I'm getting my ass out of here. <laughs> oh, lordy. Um, I think that's about it. Um, along with all the relevant clips that I've got. Um, um, oh, yeah. And, and when Eve was actually caught by Lucy, um, she... She just pulled Scott into a kiss. She's like, um, you know, and Scott and Scott's in there like, well, what the fuck? Um, and she's like, you know what? I'd rather be, I would rather be seen as a slut than as a, a renegade doctor. Like, okay, um, yeah, but then again, knowing Lucy, um, she doesn't know, but we know Lucy would probably end up blabbing it to somebody that she doesn't really intend to, because it's Lucy. Um, oh, 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 what is there, what is there, what is there, what else is there? Um, yeah, yeah, very professional this show, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but it's a vlog series, so, you know. Uh, oh, there was a reference to uh, Catherine Bell as, as Lucy Torrin to Scott about Eve. Um, I don't remember much of the history on that one, but based, just based on that, I think Catherine was more of a gold digger wanting Scott for his money and all of that and um I can I can even spoil it here but by, during the show's run Catherine ends up dying a couple of times uh the second one stuck and she died the same way both times falling off of the parapet at at, at Windermere uh like jeebus first totally by accident they you know Luke and uh Alexis were were they were actually aiming for Helena and the second time Helena did it so eh. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> so to wrap up, um, we've got Victor, who is, seems to be recovering. Uh, I, I, there was some sort of thing about Lucy disguising herself as a nun to rescue him from somewhere, I guess. Um, which, I guess, happened on General Hospital. I didn't remember it. Um, uh, so Victor is doing fine. Uh, well, getting better, let's put it that way. Uh, the interns have all started their thing. Uh, there was this really humorous moment with Chris running into the on-call room after having to deal with a baby that had severe projectile vomit. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> um, oh, God. So, so um, Eve and Julie, odd couple. Um, Daniel's working for this evil guy. Kidnappers have contacted Scott uh you know, once by phone, second by note, because they probably figured the feds would be finding the phone, you know, finding the booth and everything. So, hey, why not? Um, so, yeah, that is about it. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you like this, you know, you can do the usual like, subscribe, comment, blah, 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 blah. And, and if you want to help more directly for things like, you know, equipment or what have you, I do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash gomer21xx, and for as little as a dollar per production, you get to see videos like this, my Let's Plays, podcasts, and everything, at least a day before everybody else does, and these videos I tend to upload in batches, so you can get like six or seven in a day, and you can see them before anybody else does, because I st stagger them out throughout the month, um, So and, and you get to see them all at once if you want to. Hey, <laughs> how about that? Um... But yeah, that's patreon.com slash gomer21xx. And even though she's not doing the title cards for this one, um, my my girlfriend and title card artist, Becky Hopkins, also has her own Patreon, patreon.com slash Hop. If you want to commission her for something, she's pretty good. You know, reasonable prices. In fact, uh, one of my Thespian Talk co-hosts uh, is commissioning her for something as we speak. So good for her. Um, yeah, that is about 
it. Um, also, if you just want to see her artwork, uh, you can look at some of my other stuff. My Monday Let's Play series is her artwork there, but she also has an she also has a DeviantArt BeckHop.DeviantArt.com. Um, okay, I'm, I'm wrapping up. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, signing off. What's the matter? Are you jealous that she's got bigger eyes than you?